Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Uh, I hope and I pray that uh, you are doing well and the grace of God, the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is with all of us. Um, my name is Odile Munongo, Sister Odile Munongo. For those who don't know me, uh, I am from the Democratic Republic of the Congo in uh, Katanga province, and uh, I've been residing in America for, for a long time. So I, the purpose of this video is to share with you my testimony, one of my many testimonies. Uh, something that happened to me uh, this year on April 15th, around 7 p.m., uh, I saw that I had a, a, a huge pimple on my left bottom, and uh, it was becoming really painful. The, I knew that I had to go to the uh, emergency room because uh, I would not be able to sleep that night. The pain was getting stronger and stronger. It was pulsating, you know, and very hard to the touch and very warm compared to the skin around. So we went to the emergency room with my son. He, he drove me and uh, they saw me, you know, they, they did, uh, they, they followed the procedure and uh, they prescribed to me two, uh, they prescribed to me uh, antibiotics and uh, I followed the, the, the prescription. When we came back home, they told me to eat, to drink, and then to go to bed. So I did that. I did exactly what was prescribed. And by midnight, I woke up vomiting. I went to the bathroom. I started vomiting. And uh, from midnight, to 5 a.m., I vomited 29 times, if you can believe that. I thought that I was going to die. It was really, really. You know, you vomit, you, you are out of breath, and then diarrhea will come. You stand up, you sit on the toilet, and then you go back vomiting again. I was shaking, I was sweating, I was hot, I was cold, and all that together was like, my God, what, what is going on? Holy Spirit, where are you? Where are you? I need help, I need help. Because I uh, started having shortness of breath, and uh, I knew that it was uh, an allergic reaction to the cocktail of the uh, antibiotic that I was given. So by 8 a.m., we went back to the emergency room. Uh, we got there, they saw me, they did more tests, and the doctor decided that he needed to extract that boil. It was not a small pimple, it was not just a pimple, it was more than that, that they needed to remove it. So he called my brother, who lives uh, an hour and 30 minutes from, from my place. I reside in Los Angeles, California. And he came, and they said, we need to intervene, we need to do uh, an intervention, we need to do a surgery. I, you know, it was happening so fast. I was like, okay, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me anything, really, because I'm a dreamer. I dream a lot. Really, I dream a lot. It's unusual. But I'm used to it. I mean, this is me. That's the gifting that I've had, even. I can tell you dreams that I had when I was four years old. And they were dreams that would make sense, you know? You, 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 you smell, you, Test things in the dream. They were vivid dreams. I've always been like that. And I, I am so grateful to the Holy Spirit because I avoided so many things, bad things. And I made good choices because of my dreams. So without dreams, I'm lost. I'm lost. I, when I wake up, I didn't dream anything. I'm like, I didn't dream anything. You know, it's a, it's a big deal for me. Anyway, I... I was puzzled. I was like, Holy Spirit, you didn't tell me. You didn't tell me that I would go under the knife. 
you didn't tell me that I will have these huge pimples because he, when even concerning my health, I mean, he has really, up to that point, he was uh, a very present help in time of trouble and in time of need. So I could not say no because uh, the pain was uh, excruciating. So I, I said yes. Uh, we signed the papers, my brother was there, he signed the papers, and we went to the operating room. And from there, I am told that I fell into a coma and uh, was in a coma for five days. Uh, what I saw was that I was going, they opened two doors for me. They were well, beautiful doors, good and carved. I paid attention to details because I'm an interior designer. I love beauty and uh, I looked at the door. They were really beautiful, well done, you know? Uh, dark like cherry wood kind of. Anyway, they opened the door and I saw that it was a large room with an uh, alley in the middle and people on the left and on the right. And all the way at the, the, the end of the room, you had a, a desk with three men. They had microphones. They had that uh, stern appearance, you know, like judges. They called my name, I went in. I got to that place, I stood there. And uh, the one in the middle said, are you ready to go? I knew what he was talking about. I knew that he was talking about crossing, going to the other side, uh, transitioning. I said, I don't think so. I'm not done yet. Uh, my book is not finished. Uh, I need to finish my book. At least people will understand me. They will have a better understanding of me, of my persona, and uh, and they need to know what I saw and what the Holy Spirit did through me in our partnership, because my ministry is just the Holy Spirit and myself, we want the two of us. And uh, I said, I'm not done yet. He said, okay. So he turned to the audience behind me and he said, is there someone here who wants to say something? My sister, she's uh, in back in my country, stood up, she said, I have something to say. She said, when Odile started praying 20 years ago, I gave up my, uh, my I was working, the Holy Spirit told me stop working because it was, this is a full-time ministry. Those were very trying times because I, I am very methodical. I love to control my life. I love to be, to know where I'm going. Uh, I love to plan. And uh, so when he came, he told me, stop working. It's going to be a full-time ministry. I'm going to provide for you. Uh, I was freaking out. I was like, okay. I believed in God. I knew that God can provide, but uh, you know, it's different when you work from God, you work for God than working in a company where you know that on the 15th, on the 30th, you have your paycheck, you know, but with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't work like that, I came to discover. So, in the beginning to me, that was uncertainty, but when he told me stop working, I had to call my family because they invested in my uh, education, I never had a scholarship. They paid for everything. My father, when he passed away, my mother continued, and then the rest of my my family. So they, my siblings, they had high hopes for me because they knew that I was intelligent, that I could bring a master, which I did. So I have my bachelor in interior design and then in fine art, uh, and then uh, I'm a gemologist because we have so many gems in the Congo. I have a passion for gems and jewelries and all that. And I'm a jewelry designer also. So I equated my self-worth with my job. Because up to the 
this point, everything that I did was because of the degree. I have the degree, therefore I'm qualified to do this. So when the Holy Spirit came, he told me, it's a full-time ministry, I said, okay, which Bible, study, Bible school do you want me to go? Because there are so many of them uh, here in Southern California alone. He said, I don't want you to go to Bible college because I have many uh, pastors, children, servants who have very good oratory skills, who know how to deliver a message, who know how to, to, you know, they make you, they make your heart beat faster. I, I have that already. Your ministry is going to be different. It's going to be a ministry in the background. Uh, I said, I like that. He said, yes, because of your character. I, I'm, I'm not a talkative person. I'm not social. I'm very introverted. I don't like to go out. I don't. And that's how I am. So he said, I'm going to use that for your ministry. So you are not after fame and the glory and the look at me, look at me. You are very quiet. So that's what I want for this ministry. He gave me two names of two pastors that are here in America that he gave this kind of ministry, but they, they were both female, well known on a first name basis. You would know who I'm talking about, but I don't want to create any problems. Um, he said, look, they left me. So one even went to Hollywood and uh, they left me behind. But I need someone who is quiet, someone who is going to see. And when I wake you up from one to three to four, it's just you and me. I was like, yeah, I can do that. I was divorced at that point, raising my son alone. We were just leaving the two of us. So my life evolved now that I was no longer working, so it was my son and me and the Holy Spirit. So amazingly enough, he removed those fears from me. He rearranged everything in a way that I'm still, when I look back, I, I'm like, how did he do that? But he's God. And um, so my ministry was a quiet one. I knew that it was quiet. And then at one point, he gave me a microphone. He gave me a microphone in my vision as I was praying. I said, why are you giving me a microphone? He said, now the time for you to speak has come. Uh, I'm giving you the anointing to go out there. You will go travel the continent of Africa and preach the gospel and save souls. I said, OK. He said, but your saving source is going to be different. I will let you know more as we go. I remember vividly feeling the microphone in my right hand. That was like 10 years ago. So in that tribunal, my sister stood up. She said, when Odile started praying 20 years ago, we didn't take her seriously because no one has ever preached the gospel in my family. I was the first one. No one has ever served God in a service, you know, like, a, yeah, we had Christians, but most of them were Catholic, which if you're Catholic, I'm sorry to say it, but I'm saying it because it's the truth. You are not a real Christian. Uh, there are churches, they are called, they have the word cross in it, but they are not Christians, not what I call Christian. And I can explain why, but that's not the topic. That's another topic for another day. And um, so she said, so she has to finish her job because the light of God has penetrated into our family, but we still have many people need to be saved. They are in the dark. So she cannot go, she has to finish. And the three men started talking about themselves. And they say, yes, you're right. She's not done yet. She's not done yet. And then he called it Ezekiel 22, 30. That's a verse that really, 20 
years ago when the Holy Spirit came knocking at my door, he told me, I want you to serve me. I need you. I was like, God, do you need someone? He quoted Ezekiel 22, 30, which I didn't know because I was really Catholic at that time, so I didn't know the Bible. He told me, open your Bible, Ezekiel 22, 30. I, I must be honest, up to that point, for me, the Bible was just the Psalms and the new, new, the four Gospels. And I had books that I never even opened, ever, in the Bible. So I looked for Ezekiel 22, 30. I was looking for men among them to stand in the gap. So I read it once, twice, you know, it was 2 a.m. I was still sleepy. I read it and I was like, what does it mean? He said, if you don't stand in the gap, I'm going to destroy your family because of your iniquity, your collective iniquity. So I need someone who is going to stand to be standing in front of me, before me, for the collective. I didn't understand what it meant, really. But I said yes. So hearing that man in the tribunal repeating Ezekiel 22, 30, he brought me back to that place. And he said, so the world is almost done. Go back. You need weapon, like Nehemiah. Have your tools in one hand and your prayers in the other for your people. So it's your little family. I have only one, I have two, ch two children. Your children, your family, your tribe. I give you that responsibility. And then the uh, Katanga, your province, and then the Congo, and then the, the whole continent of Africa. So they say you need to go back go back, go finish your assignment. I said, okay. And as they were talking, I looked at myself, My the dress that I had became gold, completely gold. I've never seen a fabric like that ever in my life. As I was looking at me, uh, myself, a man came, he gave me a sword, a gold, it was completely gold. I don't know how they do that. And he gave me a, a shield. And I knew how to hold the shield because throughout these 20 years of ministry, the Holy Spirit gave me six of them. I mean, they, they, he kept giving me better and better. You know, like we said, we go from glory to glory. So they gave me that. And he started proclaiming things about me, about what is to come, and the assignment that I'm supposed to do. It's too personal, I cannot share yet. Um, that's how I woke up, sneezing from that coma with those tubes and all that. I was laying in on the bed. They tied me up because they were afraid that in my, you know, when you deal with a, the aftermath of uh, anesthesia and all that you can people are, uh, can be unruly and pull out things so i was bound like this and uh, with something to hold my throat because i had i had tubes and that's how i came back to it took me five minutes to realize that i was up awake and aware they say asking me questions you know uh, how many fingers is the president of the United States, you know, like they do in movies, you know, it's almost funny, but they, at 6 p.m. they took me in the, my room and uh, from the intensive care unit. To me, I was there, but I was still in that place. It's only when a month after, that I told my sister what I saw in that room. We were talking and she told me, there's something that I need to tell you. She related to me exactly what I saw, word for word. And so I stayed in the hospital for two months, 
now I'm undergoing uh, rehabilitation and uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, I'm biking. I, they had to leave me, it was really trying. And all the time I was like, Holy Spirit, where are you? Why didn't you tell me anything? Why, why, why? And before this attack on April 15th, from December of last year, the Holy Spirit told me fast 50 days. I did. I slept on the floor for 50 days. And I was just uh, doing Holy Communion every day with my son and praying, worshiping. I saw many things, I destroyed many things, I established many things, but I was like, I need more, there has to be more. Where's the glory of 50 day fast? Because I know that with every fast, God gives you something. Uh, 3, 7, 14, 21, 40, he didn't answer me. So when we, after I left the hospital June 3rd, that's when I came back home. As soon as I was in my, my bed, that night I didn't sleep. It was like I was on a boat, you know, like the waves up and down, up and down. I knew it was the anointing, so I was not scared, but I wanted to see. I was really curious, like, I need to understand why did you allow this? Why, why, why? And uh, because the pain of the surgery, you know, I could not turn, I could not. I needed help to wake up, to sit up, to go to the bathroom. Uh, I needed to be bathed. I mean, it was really, it took me back. It was very painful, uh, very. And all I could hear is, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil for you are with me. And he was there with me, but he was not as talkative as usual, and I was used to that communicating thing, you know? You asked so many questions. And then one day, two days, three days later, I realized that I was having a vision. Without warning, I was not praying, he just came, he studied like that. So I, I started paying attention to things. I was hearing voices. I was seeing things and then he told me this is what comes with a 50 day fast it's like ah okay i will not go into many details but my life changed it changed me i'm a different person In 20 years, you know, he brought me, molded me, brought me back, molded me, you know, that launderer soap that Malachi talks about, that uh, furnace where the silversmith throws silver silver inside until he sees his reflection. I went through so many stages, you know, and uh, the wilderness, it's not just once. For those who have had this experience, you can uh, concur, I think you are, you agree with me, that the wilderness is not a joking matter. So I went through all that, but this, is, this was something else. This was really something else. So it changed me, my ministry changed. The way I do things, like, I can have a dream. The dream ends. I'm still sleeping. In my sleep, it will explain to me what was the problem and how to deal with it. Repeat after me. I repeat after you. We destroy. I see angels coming, doing their thing. And then when you wake up, you're like, oh, I need to pray. Say, no, it's already done. It's already done. I feel like. I'm printing with uh, a laser printer, not a regular printer. This is another level, I don't know how to call it, but it's something that came in the furnace of affliction. It's something that was given to me because of the pain. 
So you gave me a better understanding about the Holy Spirit, about his ways of doing. He gave me a better, he brought on my shoulders, like I can carry more, I can endure more, not that I want, but if need be, I'm available. I told him, I'm available. And then as I seeing and gauging my fellow pastors, I'm not a pastor, I didn't go to Bible College like I told you, but you look at them, some, I don't watch Christian TV anymore. You see a pastor coming in, you're like, he's naked. The pastor is naked. Others will come preach, they don't have the, the, the armor of God on. As I start seeing and not judging, but seeing what was the problem with today's church, with our church, this present time church, we are in trouble. We are in trouble. So, at least twice per week, I don't sleep. It will keep me up until 4 a.m. And, uh, and we work, we pray. Oh, I sing. I sing. And I'm learning a lot, I'm seeing a lot. And I am just grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be sane, everything came back. I can work without my worker, not a long distance, but I can. And uh, that's what I saw. God is good. God is good. People of God, I'm, I'm telling you, God is good. What the enemy meant for evil, because this didn't come from him. It came from enemies. He showed me who, on the human side, and of course Satan on the spiritual side, they work in synergy, like you, you know how they do. Uh, the same way God needs human beings to work, Satan also needs human beings to work. But he gave me the victory. I'm alive. Here I am. And I am making sure that the Satan is sorry. Sorry, he's um, really. I'm still alive. So as long as I'm alive, I'm going to serve God. And uh, I'm working on my book. I'm editing it. I'm alive. So for those who follow me on YouTube, that's why you didn't see me for three months and a half. I was really, really sick. It's because I have a combat combative nature. But uh, there were nights where I was sure that I will not wake up and see the sunlight. Another day, no, I will not. And, uh, and yet, every morning, morning by morning, I saw his grace, I saw his mercy. I remember I was asking the surgeon who came to check on me, I told him, how long am I going to stay here? He said, oh, probably until Halloween, so that would be the end of October or something. I looked at him, and in June, they released me. So that was his schedule, but he had his. So I rather go with his. Who support are you going to believe? I believe his. So I'm home, I'm alive, I'm exercising, I'm taking care of myself, I'm eating right, lost 15 pounds in the process, and uh, I'm alive. And I'm serving the Lord with all my heart, with all my might, with all my strength. And He knows that He can count on me. I will not stop. I'm going all the way. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for allowing me to extend to you and to, to share with you, to testify of his goodness, of his might, and uh, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, people of God. I'm telling you, we serve a living God. We serve a living God. God bless you.